All right, so welcome to the arena uh, with myself and Suetonia. And of course, the stars of the show, Platinum Sensitivity and Test Alliance, please ignore. So Platinum Sensitivity bring in the same thing they brought before. If it worked, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Three Bar Guests, Basilisk, Bifrost, Triple Caracal, Vigil, and the Griffin, of course. Yeah, and Test has uh, dropped a pilot. They're now using a, uh, a seven-man setup, which is two Nighthawks, three Cerberuses, and two Kirins. I think you may have someone not locked, Suetonia, as they do have three Nighthawks. Oh yeah, sorry. So yeah, triple Nighthawk, triple Serb, double Kirin. So yeah, I mean, I'm. It's, it's different, which is good. I mean, they showed they couldn't work with the golems. They the platform sensitivity found a counter to it. They knew how to deal with it. They bumped them apart. They clearly had enough damage to break them. They said, let's switch it up. Let's go for triple Nighthawk, triple Cerberus, and double Kirin. And I actually kind of like it. I think I think this has a reasonable chance here um, for an undermanned comp. I think just through virtue of these ships all being very strong. They've got six, six strong DPS boats, the three Nighthawks, the three Serbs. They're more than capable of dealing with the Caracals, the Vigil, the Griffin, as I talked about before the match, those rapid light missile boats absolutely mince through them, the Basilisk as well, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, they should be able to absolutely wreck the support wing. And then the Nighthawks... They are heavy, oh. no, sorry, they're hams, so they're going to have to be in the close range. Are they ham Cerberuses as well? Should uh, the rapid, rapid light, rapid light, yeah, I would, I would be surprised at ham, ham services, but ham night hawks, yeah. I mean, if they expect to be on top of the bar, I guess that makes sense. Those guys can brawl each other out, but the services at least should have a fun time dealing with the frigate wing, yeah. They get they get they can, if, if anything else happens, like they can at least probably kill the griffin this time, you know, even if they lose, <laughs> they kill that griffin, so they, they won technically. Yeah, I think it would be a wise choice as well not to make the mistake that um, another team made earlier in the day and promptly deal with the Vigil as well, of course. All these ships, um, you know, the three Cerberuses, the two Kirins, all going to suffer pretty significantly from being painted, so dealing with the Vigil, taking those bonus paints away and making it more difficult for the Bargus to apply um, would be a pretty high-priority move. So these Cerberuses and Nighthawks are just burning straight in. Uh, they're shooting the uh, Basilisk right now, which is after benefited, so these Nighthawks are actually catching up to it. The hams are expiring before they reach him right now, but they're about to reach him. As a test have a, a carrying in about half shields, I guess the Caracals are probably going to make mincemeat of the uh, test uh, shield logi. But it, if this Basilisk gets caught by these Nighthawks, which it will shortly, it might not, it might not be uh, that bad for test. Yeah, so that first that first Kirin does go down, but the Vigil is taking chunks of damage as well, presumably from the Cerberuses who are, you know, they've got so much range with the Rapid Lights, they can just be pretty much anywhere and still hit him. Um, so yeah, the Vigil goes down, so that's going to be pretty significant um, debuff to the, to the damage application from Platinum Sensitivity. Yeah, I think these Nighthawks are always going to take full damage from Rapid Heavies regardless, but it yeah. might be enough for the Cerberuses to uh, last a little bit longer. Yeah, and I'm, I'm still seeing... With that, um, both Kirin's dead, there's still a significant chunk on that active tank bar um, for the test side, so these are surely XLASB Nighthawks, so they're going to be pretty tanky regardless. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the Cerberus have an XLSB too. Uh, it looks like Charak oh, yeah. is uh, surviving right now. The the, the Basis has been caught by the Nighthawks, though, now. It looks like he's uh, not really taking that much damage yet, though. There is uh, the three Nighthawks sitting on top of him, and he is webbed by at least one of them. Yeah, but I mean, we saw those jams coming out from the from the Griffin on the two Nighthawks and then back on the three Nighthawks, so it's potential that they're all jammed. I mean, this has been a very Caldari-focused day. It may have been um, easy somewhat for Platinum Sensitivity to Caldari stack the Griffin. He made this, I mean, there's a real potential here for him to have like three or more Caldari jams. Um, yeah, I, I am not cool. seeing any missiles coming out of any of the Nighthawks and shooting the Basilisk. Yeah, so those Cerberuses need to be dealing with that Griffin ASAP, but... Um, yeah, I mean they are they are chunking him, but I'm not sure if they should have got rid of him before the vigil. Um, but he's he's holding yeah, for the time being. He's taking some damage, but yeah, the, the vigil kill I think might have made sense while the Griffin is gone. The Griffin is down. The, the vigil the vigil kill probably makes sense while the Kirins are still alive, but like killing him once the Kirins are dead is probably a bit of a waste because I, I think the Bargus are almost always going to be able to apply to everything else uh, pretty well. Yeah, and that they've lost that first service in the meantime, so that was, I mean. They're not going to like the RNG Jesus thing again, but I mean the the Griffin clearly pretty influential in this match and stopping those Nighthawks firing on the Basilisk. Because they're still just parked on top of, clearly not Jan, but not really having much impact. As this third Cerberus now does start taking chunks of armor, and he's going to go down pretty rapidly. Yeah, but I mean it, it, the Basilisk is starting to take a lot of damage now. I think now with all of the Nighthawks unjammed and you know 
probably having like three webs on on him instead of just you know like one. Uh, he's probably going to take a bit more damage. But even if they lose the Basilisk at this point, I think three Bargus and three Caracals can pretty much take three Nighthawks uh, fairly well. Yeah, for sure. And as well, even if even if they were sort of outstatted in terms of DPS and tank, I mean, they know that these are ham Nighthawks and these are rapid heavy Bargusts. So, I mean, there's always the potential as well to just buy some time and spread out, burn around, use their superior range and uh, speed and scrams, scram range, etc. to keep the Nighthawks at arm's length. And this Basilisk is still holding just fine. Yeah, he's doing uh, very well. I have to wonder if it's like an application issue or if it's like maybe a damage type issue. I'm not like he's just doing really, really well. Yeah, it is potential that the Nighthawks are in fact um, loaded kinetic, which the Basilisk is going to be pretty strong against. There's also all these rep drones on him, which um, the three Nighthawks, the, the, just the test comp in general, didn't really have an effective way of dealing with. Of course, with no Skybreak, no Stormbringer. Um, not much of a support wing to talk about um, to deal with these rep bots. So the Basilisk is just being held up pretty much by these swarm uh, of is not, bot Basilisk is not webbed anymore either, so I'm not really sure what's going on, like well, how he escaped web range. Because uh, one of the Nighthawks has dropped off behind him, and he's completely unwebbed, so his like damage mitigation is going to be like really, really high, especially against like you know like Rage, a hand DPS. Yeah, I think the Bargus just burnt over and put their scrams on the Nighthawks, and of course the, the scrams shut off the MWD of the Nighthawks, but as you mentioned, the Afterburner Basilisk doesn't really care about being scrammed himself, so he can just sort of slowly burn out of range, and uh, yeah, this is this is going to mark the end of, of the night for both these teams, and um, congratulations to Platinum Sensitivity. But of course, a Valiant showing from Test, um, with only seven or eight pilots throughout the evening, and getting to the finals is itself a pretty remarkable achievement, so good job to them. Um, now we await the final kill of the night of Party Boy and the Nighthawk. Yeah, good fights being called. Uh, uh, Tess put up a pretty good fight. Unfortunately, uh, Platinum Sensitivity are going to take it 2-0 to zero here in this final series. Uh, Dreadit are recruiting, by the way. So, uh, you know, maybe you could be the uh, the uh, ninth and 10th pilot in Tess's AT team next year. Yeah, they got two spots um, open, to, open to applications. <laughs> Um, they could use a Vigil or Griffin pilot of their own, I think. So, you know, you're not going to need much SP to uh, to get a slot either. Clearly those ships are very, very important, or else they wouldn't have been chosen to die so damn quickly in this match. But, alas, it wasn't enough. Yeah, As Party Boy does finally go down. So, yeah, congratulations to Platinum Sensitivity, um, the winners of this evening's tournament. And I think we will send it briefly back to the studio.